Hello and a very warm welcome to Saturday Confessions right here on TV 47. My name is Leangare and my sign language interpreter tonight is An Wairimo. As we promised you, Samun Kimani, aka Bamboo the Rapper, is here with us today to share his story. Let me remind you, last week on Saturday, we had his wife, Erika Mukisa, who shared a very chilling story of having an experience of 18 years serving the devil directly. Now, Erika Mukisa is married to Bamboo, who is also here in studio to share his equally chilling story of almost selling his soul to the devil. Remember, you can engage us through our social media platforms, that is TV47KE on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Right now, let's delve into the discussion. Hi, Babu. Hello. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I see you have quite a number of books, by the way. Yes, we do. And I'm sure we'll be looking at that as we move on. Yes, yes, we will. You know, it's, it's so good to have you and it's so good to hear people who have gone through these experiences because most people choose to be quiet about them yes. and others because they perhaps have had maybe a traumatic experience they want to share. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you have been in the music industry for quite some time. Yes. Let's begin there. How long have you been in the music industry? Oh, wow. Since uh, 1997 when, uh, and I was just a kid. So um, since 1997. So it's been over 20 years. Mm -hmm. 20 yeah. years? Yes, over and 20 years. How many stages have you been able to get on? You know, across the globe, Kenya. Oh, wow. I can't even count how many. Um, you know, entertainment took me all over the world. You know, so, you know, uh, I've been across stages across East Africa, across um, Europe and, mm -hmm. and the U.S. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I just want to understand. Of course, we already know you almost sold your soul to the devil because mm -hmm. of influence from people. Yes. Um, tell us about the build up of your career. Just a little bit of history. Well, um, th the music bug has always been in our family. You know, my dad was a musician, so um, I guess he must have got it from his father. And, mm -hmm. and it's in our bloodline. We just love music. And so, um, you know, I got into music early. Mm -hmm. um, I was still in high school when I was, you know, doing music. And um, amazingly, uh, you know, music's doors just kind of opened up for me. And I was able to just, you know, really get into it and um, really build a following. And so, um, as the years went, progressed, of course, uh, I, I joined a group called K-South. K-South stood for Kariobangi South. And um, we built our buzz just through word of mouth. You know, social media wasn't even big at that time. Mm -hmm. But just through word of mouth and just be, by, you know, being consistent and being really creative. We used to practice all the time. So, yeah, we got really good. And, uh, you know, the word of mouth, uh, you know, our name spread, our brand spread, and we found ourselves traveling and doing all kinds of things. Then I went solo. And after I went solo, um, one of my major singles was called Compe, and it, and it took off. And that allowed me to travel back to the U.S. I, w I grew up in the U.S. from mm -hmm. childhood to about, um, I, w I must have been about 15 when I came to Kenya. And then... Um, uh, went to high school, I continued with my studies, but I was doing music at the same time. And so I traveled back to the U.S. through music and, um, to and began touring, you know, in different states. And um, that's how I was able to meet a lot of the, you know, superstars that are in the U.S. behind the scenes. And Let's just talk a bit about your exposure. Like, yeah. uh, you've mentioned that you are able to travel globally. Mm -hmm. You've been able to meet quite a number of international artists. Oh, yeah. Oh, the few that you've met, who are they? Wow, um, I met a con. Uh, I don't know, you know, maybe he might be kind of old by now. But Akon, I met. Um, I met. Ran into Jay Z in New York. I've run into um, uh, so many different artists. Uh, ja Rule. I met uh, Gucci Man. I've met so many artists in Atlanta. You know, um, because I would frequent the places where you know they were. They would often. Uh, would, where they would often go to. I, would, I, was, I was writing behind the scenes for uh, Convict Music for some time. And so because uh, I have the gift and the skill to create records, to craft records and to write, um, I was able to get in and, and you know, get to know some of these guys behind the scenes. You know, yeah. you know for many artists, um, 
I'll say, I also tried out music. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> at some point. I yes. mean, everyone wants to be a superstar. Yeah. And I tried out music <laughs> at some point. And I, I realized it's very difficult to penetrate the music industry. Yes. Even the, the global industry is even harder. Yeah. Now, if the Kenyan industry is even hard, mm -hmm. how were you able to access this big name such as Jay-Z? Yeah. I've also seen a picture of you with Russell Simmons. Yes. How were you able to get into contact with them? Um, I think through, well, there's the talent. And then there's the hard work and then connections, you know, and just remain consistent and you're able to kind of move up just through working hard. You know, anything that you really put your mind to do, I, I believe anybody can really, you know, get in and really do. But um, the connections and networking and, and, and staying in it, you know, uh, can really get you far. Yeah. I mean, because now there's people who are in the industry who are not even talented, but because they're committed they move to you know those next levels and so um, yeah just you know the level of commitment and being able to work hard yeah and having talent all right yeah. so what I now actually trying to understand is at what point did you now start meeting these people who are trying to lure you into devil worshiping what exactly happened what's your first encounter with these guys well um, they'll never come out to your face and just tell you you know hey you need to do this it will always be very subtle. It, you, you know, the enemy, the devil does not come out and tell you, hey, come worship me, you know what I mean? And I'll give you whatever you want. Um, he's tried that with some people. He tried that with Jesus and Jesus turned him down. But the way he does it, he's very subtle. He, he, you'll sell your soul slowly, not just, you know, in an, in an overnight type of thing. When you say so, slowly, what do you mean? Through various uh, stages of compromise. You know, um, one sells their soul through compromising their integrity. So your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So whenever you compromise your integrity, you're losing a portion of your soul. So you lose a portion of your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's why somebody like Britney Spears would, would be a complete superstar, but, you know, ripping her hair out and shaving her head on camera and going crazy. Why? Because you lose a portion of your soul as, you're, as you proceed to to seek fame and to, and to seek power and the things that you're looking for in the world, which are vanity, but it costs you everything. It costs you your soul, you see? So people are willing to give up their souls in exchange for money, power, and fame, which is the exact same thing that Satan offered Jesus. He said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you money, power, and fame. Everything you can see in this world, I'll give it to you. So I have a question for you. Yeah. Did you ever go through these stages by the time you got to that particular stage that made you back out? Yeah, I, I mean, I got to like right at the edge where, um, you know, a, a young lady was telling me, a young lady who I happened to date at the time, her name was Crystal, and she listened to my music. And this was while I was living in New York. And she says, wow, you know, you can really blow up. You can, you know, you really have the skill to do this thing. And she was like, um, I know why you haven't blown up yet. You're not a part of the brotherhood. So she took me to a Santeria priest so that I can be initiated into the brotherhood. And after that, you know, you really blow up. And Santeria is big in, in, in uh, music business in America. I mean, there's, there's big names in Santeria. There's, you know, Jennifer Lopez, her ex-husband. I mean, just there's big names in Santeria. And, and, you know, Satanism, generally, if you look behind the scenes in, in celebrityhood, there's big Satanists, you know what when I mean? When you With say Santeria, hmm. what do you mean by Santeria? What's Santeria? Santeria is a, Santeria is a, it's, it's a form of witchcraft. It's just a form of witchcraft. The, you know, hell has many entrances, many different religions, many different um, ways that you can sell your soul, or many different ways to compromise. That's why in Christianity they say there's only one way, through Jesus Christ, but to hell there are many entrances. There's only one entrance to heaven and that's Jesus. But hell has very many entrances. So Santeria is just one of them. You know, the music industry is another one. The entertainment industry is another entrance. You know, there's so many different entrances. There's banking, there's, there's military, there's all kinds of different entrances into hell. But there's only one way into heaven. I want us yeah. to go back in detail. Yeah. This lady who introduced you to this person that you call the Santeria, who is mm -hmm. probably, as you say, He's a this, priest. Is, this is a priest, mm -hmm. a witchcraft mm -hmm. priest. Yeah. What exactly happened? Narrate to us the story of that day. Okay. Um, so we were living in Brooklyn, New York at the time. And um, 
we go to, she takes me to his shop. Now, the shops in New York, they call them bodegas. So she takes me to his bodega. Um, and he's got all kinds of things in his shop. Uh, candles. I saw candles with different pictures of saints. St. Peter and St. Paul and St. Mary and all of these different saints, which we're not supposed to be doing anyway. We're not supposed to be praying through saints. You know, you pray directly to the Father in the name of Jesus. But now... There are different saints and different candles, candles for money, candles for dreams, candles for love and romance and all kinds of, you know, religious uh, witchcraft candles. And then um, there was books and literature. There's like the sixth and seventh book of Moses, which is a book of witchcraft enchantments and, and, and uh, like witchcraft curses, things that you repeat and you can conjure spirits. Okay. So I saw all this stuff in his store and I was like, wow, this stuff is crazy, you know, and um, there's all kinds of incense and charms and statues and weird things, you know, all kinds of witchcraft things. And then um, at the counter where you're supposed to pay for the items, there was, uh, there was the cash register, obviously, and then there's, the, there's, a, there's a giant, um, a grim reaper. I don't know if you know what a grim reaper is. The grim reaper is, a, is the angel of death. He's, he's wearing like a black hood, a black hoodie that covers, a black robe that covers him. And then inside the hood, there's a skeleton. And then he's holding a sickle, a sickle, uh, you know, the long stick that's used for harvesting. So it's a, it's a long stem with a, with a very sharp blade at the end. And he's standing on the counter. And from the top to the, to the bottom of this sickle, there's dollars, dollar bills on top of dollar bills. You know what I mean? So people sell their souls to this devil because of money. And he really does give them money. But oh. at the end of the contract, mm -hmm. yeah, they, you know, what, that's why Jesus said, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? All right. So when you went there, the friend who took you there, what were you supposed to get from that particular shop? So in particular he, that was going to help your career grow yeah so crystal took me to that shop and what she said was this man is going to initiate you he's going to baptize you into the brotherhood and then after he baptizes you things are going to start going your way yeah so but what the was things, the guarantee had it worked for someone else are there people you know who had actually gone that he, direction she said yeah she mentioned the fact that you know all of the greats have done it you know everybody who's ever been great Notorious B.I.G., Tupac, you know, all of the uh, Big L, all of these guys who had already had deals before, who, who wanted record deals and got them. And some of them are even t big till this day, you know, have passed through the brotherhood. So I said, oh, okay. You know, I was, of course, I was a little hesitant. I was wondering, what does this have to do with music? You know, we're just, I'm, I'm good at making records. I'm good at crafting records. Why, why are we doing this? But, um, you know, when you want something really bad, you, you're almost desperate. And desperate people do desperate things. Were you so, desperate at that time? Funny enough, I wasn't really desperate, but I was hungry. You know, I wanted, I, wanted, I wanted this music career. I mean, I'd come back from Kenya. I'm in the States now. I'm ready to make this thing happen, you know, like... Um, the, it, it, it looked like a door of opportunity, you know, it wasn't so much desperation as it was more like, wow, an opportunity to, you know, really have success, you know, and so um, like any other young man, I, I really wanted it. And so the, the priest was like, hey, are you ready? You know, we can do this. And I said, you know, I, I heard a still small voice, you know, when God speaks, it's not a it's not like a thundering sound from heaven it's a little still small voice and he just said you know once you cross this line you don't go back so once I heard that I said okay well let me think about it you know and I told him I'd, uh, let me buy some books and see what you guys are about before I jump in and he said of course yeah go ahead go ahead you know so I bought I used that excuse to buy some time and then I got out of that shop and when I was walking out, I was like, I don't know why I felt like that was close, you know, but um, I never went back again. But I mean, that was just one instance where I was that close, but I didn't realize it at the time. I just knew that, you know, some of the stuff in there was kind of scary, like, you know, the Grim Reaper, the Angel of Death. Like, what, what, is this, what, what does this have to do with music, you know? So, yeah, I came that close. You know? And when you talk about the brotherhood, what's the brotherhood in this case? In the entertainment industry, there 
are circles of brotherhood, okay? They don't allow you in unless you are covenanted. And to be covenanted means that you've compromised your integrity. You're willing to do anything to get in. So usually it will be some crazy sexual act, you know, on top of an initiation. It's very spiritual. But the sexual act will covenant you to, to somebody who's already in. So once they sleep with you, or once they, and that's why the, the industry right now is it's really, it's, it's really a homosexual industry. The American music industry is a homosexual industry. It, actually, not just music, entertainment, period. It's a homosexual industry. And so a lot of these guys who you're seeing, I mean, I don't care how gangster they look, a lot of these guys behind the scenes, there's footage of them, you know, doing some homosexual act. And they use that over you. They'll blackmail you with that. They'll say, now from now on, we own you. Yes, you're a superstar. Yes, you're getting million dollar checks, but we own you. And you're on video. And you know you're on video because you saw them recording you. But they're like, if you really want this, do what you gotta do, you know? And people do it because they're desperate. They, they want fame that much. And when they compromise your integrity on that level, you really do sell your soul, okay? People really sell their soul. That's why Jesus says in Luke 21, 19, in your patience, possess ye your souls. He's telling you, hold on, you know, those things you're looking for in life, success, God can give you success, but if you want to compromise your integrity, if you want to take a shortcut to get it, then it's going to cost you your soul. All right. Yeah. I want us to take a short break. I know there's much more to this story that you're yet to tell us because yes. that was just the beginning of what was being lured to sell your soul to the devil. Yeah. I want us to take a short break and when we return, we go deeper into your story, Bamboo. Um, remember, you can engage us through our social media platforms. That is TV Ford 7 ke on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Remember, you can also send your questions. If you have questions for Bamboo, he will be sure to answer those questions so you can shoot them through right now. Let's take a short break. Don't go too far. We'll be back shortly.
Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Saturday Confessions right here on TV47. Remember, you can engage us through our social media platforms. That is TV47KE on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Tonight, we also uh, talk about exactly what happens in the kingdom of the devil and exactly what's happening in the music industry and generally the showbiz industry. And with us, again, if I can just mention, is Bamboo, who has been narrating to us a little bit about his story. And before we took a short break of course you told us um your experience you have a friend who tries to initiate you into devil worships so that you can actually get to grow your career mm -hmm. of course your story does not end there tell us a little bit about the rest of the story well um after crystal introduced me to this uh uh santeria priest in new york i was like you know I knew that whatever she was trying to introduce me to was way too deep or way too crazy for me. I wasn't, you know, even if I wanted to get into the industry, I didn't want to mess with the stuff she was messing with. I felt like, man, that, that stuff is a little deep, you know. So I broke it off with her and, and left New York and I moved back to Atlanta. So, um, you know, needless to say, I, con I continued with the music industry and then I decided that, um, you know, I was going to release more music and be traveling back and forth between the U.S. and Kenya so that I can, you know, build the industry while I'm here and build while I'm in the U.S. and just have that and maintain the international um, appeal. And so I traveled back to Kenya uh, in 2012. Now, when I got back to Kenya, you know, it was, it was, you know, a lot of celebration, you know, hey, Bamboo's back, hey, let's do this thing, you know. Um, and naturally, I jumped right in, you know, with both feet. But I, I don't think the enemy was done trying to pull me in. So, um, you know, as time progressed, man, a lot of the doors that were open for me before just started closing all of a sudden, you know. Things that I would do ordinarily that were so easy, all of a sudden, these but that, does that mean that you were to some degree initiated? Because if then some of the doors were closing, I what think, does that mean? I think, um, you see, life is spiritual. Life is very spiritual. So if the enemy, if the devil offers you something and you refuse, he's going to make life very hard for you. But I didn't realize that at that time. Because he was like, obviously I was right there at the door. And I'm about to open the door for him to come in. And then I refuse to open the door. So obviously he's angry. He's like, man, I have to get this kid. I'm curious. By the time you were getting to what you're saying, you know, to try and help us understand, yeah. you did get to the door. Um, of course, it means perhaps there were just small stages of this and that. Mm -hmm. What was happening during, you know, from the time of meeting these guys who told you about the brotherhood to now taking you to the Santeria? Are there mm -hmm. small things that happen in between, perhaps maybe, to, you know, benefits to get you to where you were? Well, I mean, yeah, there was all kinds of open doors, you know, opportunities. Hey, come meet this guy. Hey, go over there and meet that. I was meeting all kinds of people, you know, and, and obviously being starstruck. I was never a groupie, but at least, be, you know, being able to meet some of these guys who I really looked up to. I'm meeting Akon. I'm meeting, you know... Um, all of these people, Jay-Z, I'm meeting all of these guys, and I'm like, man, these are the guys, you know what I mean? Like, hey, these guys have already done it, I can do it too. So, um, obviously, I was really excited. And I think that's one of the two entrances the enemy uses into a human being's life. Either extreme excitement or extreme sadness. Extreme sadness being depression, but extreme excitement being, you know, when you're over the moon about something. And he uses either one of those as an entrance, because your guard is down. So um, when I was meeting these people, I was like, man, this is really happening, man. I'm about to get it. I was so really confident. So why are you confident. giving them anything in return to meet Jay-Z, Akon, and the rest of those guys? No, I wasn't. Uh, just, just the skill, just having talent, you know. And the people who are around them, they, they have a good ear for talent. They have a good ear for good music. You know, they can tell when somebody knows how to make good records. So um, if you can... If you can deliver they'll open the door for you you know what I mean especially if they see that there's a way they can make money off of you so they'll open the door for you they'll be like yeah man look 
yo, come, come write for me, come, come to the studio, let's work together, and then afterwards, you know, I'll introduce you to so and so. So that's how it would work, you know. It, you come in, you, you, you record something for them, you write for them, or write for their artists or something, and then they open the door for you to. To me, it's a, it's it's usually a favor for a favor, you know. And before we even go back to the rest of the story, because I know there's a lot more about your story. Like you've mentioned, the story does not end there. Yeah. Um, with your little experience in the industry, having come into contact with so many artists, of course, even some from the regional uh, area, mm -hmm. from maybe Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and the rest of them, are there some who have also sold their souls to the devil in the African region? Absolutely. Absolutely. That you know of personally? Yes, that I know of personally. I know personally. I mean, um, one of them was who, the one who initiated my wife, well, before I met her, you know, um, she, at the time she was just a, a sorcerer, but she had not been in, initiated to the higher levels. And so one of the musicians that's really famous in, in Uganda is the one who actually initiated her and in, introduced her directly to Lucifer himself, you know, and um, his name is Chameleon. So I don't know, you know, a lot of people know Chameleon, you know, but they have no idea that this guy spiritually is a very high level sorcerer. And not just Chameleon, I mean, musicians all over the world. It's, I mean, you know, you hear of a guy called Wizkid, but you don't know Wiz is short for wizard. You don't know who these people are. You just hear their music. And because the music is very enticing, and because the anointing that Satan has, Satan was a, he was a worshiping angel. He was a cherub that led worship in heaven, okay? So the anointing that he had, he still has it. It's just corrupted. But it still has the power to pull people. So if he anoints you, your music is going to pull people. Okay, that's how they get fans. I mean, fans in the millions. Right. So, um, and it's not just Africa. I mean, all over the world, anywhere in the world where you go, any anybody who is a supposed superstar, if you look behind the scenes, there are rituals, there are incantations, there are covenants. You don't just blow up. It's not just about the music. I'm, I'm just curious. Of course, there are Christians hmm. who totally believe in God. Um, who do you think this anointing of the devil pulls? Is it just Christians or just anyone who's willing to listen? Anyone. It, it, it will pull anyone. That's why really I encourage Christians not to listen to secular music because it's going to pull you. And, and music is very spiritual. So whatever music you're listening to is the spirit that you're inviting into your house. So if I'm listening to, you know, you could listen to a song by Lil Wayne. And if you, if you listen to that music, the spirits that are in Lil Wayne are going to be attracted to you because you're playing their music. Is this music. what they had promised you as well? What? Um, when you were being taken to the Santeria? They promised me success. The, you know, the, the devil is not going to give you the details. Like what, the, what I'm giving you right now are details about what's going to happen, what the enemy is going to use your music to do. Okay? Like... They will never tell you, Beyonce, Jay-Z, these guys, they'll never tell you. But when they record a single, first of all, as they're recording in the studio, a spirit will come inside of them. And that spirit is going to perform that music, okay? Now, after they've recorded the music, they are going to take this record, which is called the master copy, and they're going to put it on an altar, and they're going to conjure a spirit and tell the and tell demon spirits to follow the master copies wherever the masters go so if it's distributed through youtube if it's distributed through um anything any any platform whether it's mp3 mp4 it doesn't matter whatever it is th those are just you know uh electronic signals spirits can follow these things uh, whether it's a tape uh, the tapes are a little old-fashioned but you you understand what i'm telling you they can follow every copy and anybody who listens to, the, to that music is now suddenly a, has opened up the door for these spirits. Because Satan cannot curse you. He can't just outright curse you. He needs you to cooperate. In fact, Satan needs human beings so that he can attack human beings. So what does he do? He'll give you a song to listen to. And then you'll start listening to this song and you'll start singing along. And as you're singing along, you don't know you're conjuring. Those, those are not just ordinary lyrics. 
you are conjuring a spirit that's coming in and has an opportunity to curse your life now because you're participating. He needs your participation. All right. Yeah. Let's not go back to your story now. From you being now, um, you are abroad, and then you come back to Kenya. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Because now you've moved away from the Santeria. Yeah. The Santeria was not able to convince you to sell your soul to the devil. Yeah. What happens next? Yeah, so, I mean, I got away from that stuff, and I was thinking, you know, man, I, I had a certain amount of success in Africa. Why, you know, why do I need to, you know, do some ridiculous um, initiation and stuff like that? Like, that stuff was a little scary, to, to be honest. So um, I get back to Kenya, and, you know, I continue just making music, touring, and things like that. And then, you know, all of a sudden, doors start closing. Doors that were ordinarily open, that were open a long time ago. You know, all of a sudden, they start closing. Crazy things just begin happening. You know, when you're under attack, you can tell. Because just things, I mean, everything that can go wrong did go wrong. I mean, you lose your car, you lose your house, you lose, you, you just lose everything. Do you think you were losing these things because you refused to sell your soul to absolutely. the devil? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you're coming towards him he opens doors and when you're moving away from them he starts closing them you understand so um everything i mean he I lost the house lost the cars lost atms lost everything you know i would put my atm in a machine and, and it swallows the it swallows the card like i, I was I, I remember just sitting down and writing down it's like man how could everything possibly go wrong you know what i mean that can go wrong everything was going wrong and so at the time, again, a girl shows up and she's like, look, Bamboo, you should be, you should be huge. You're supposed to be all over the place. You're supposed to be a household name. You're a star. Um, you know, I know why things are going crazy for you right now. You need to talk to somebody because what they've done is your enemies have covered your star. They, you know, they've covered your star. So you have to go uh, and get your star, you know, back. When you say covered your star, what do you mean? it's possible in the world of witchcraft it's possible to steal somebody's destiny see everybody has a star um even in the in the bible we read about how joseph had a dream and in his dream the 11 stars bowed down to his star you know and his star was big um even jesus had a star the the magi came to visit so it means they saw if, his if someone interferes with your star they've interfered with your, your destiny life? with your life yeah so um so this lady told me, and she said, look, you need to go and see the, a certain gentleman, a certain doctor who can help out with your situation because obviously your star has been covered or blah, blah, blah. These are just words they were, that the enemy was using. See, the enemy knows how to send people to initiate you. He'll, he might send a boyfriend. If you're a lady, he might send a guy to pull you in. If you're a guy, he'll send a lady to pull you in, you know, or just... He has very many different methods. All right. Mm -hmm. So when we return, I want us to go deeper and just understand when you mean your star had been covered, what did you do and what happened? Yeah. I want us to take a short break. And when we return, indeed, we will look a little bit more into Bamboo's story. I must mention that Erica is also in studio and we'll be having Erica at some point during this discussion as we wrap up this very interesting and also chilling <laughs> narration of stories of uh, Bamboo and of course his wife last week uh, the encounter with devil worshippers and of course for Erica serving the devil so let's take a short break don't go too far we'll be back shortly Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Saturday Confessions right here on TV 47. Again, tonight we are hosting Bamboo, the rapper, and he's been sharing his story about uh, the fact that he almost sold his soul to the devil. We'll be sure to sample some of the comments um, as they come in. Of course, we have quite a number of them. We're trying to fix something small here and there, but let's just look at Twitter. And we have here Josh who says, Jesus is Lord. Ali Jinasua, VP in a family, the trap he was falling into. Also, Gibson so Namanya here is just exclaiming and saying, what? And we also have Andrew. Uh, Andrew is saying, 
watching this right now, is it true or is it just showbiz? Also, Emmanuel here says, Usilete Kompe is a good TBT. You get to watch how he almost sold his soul to the devil. His wife was also a sorcerer. Well, I think I'll start with Andrew Bambu. Anasema, mm -hmm. is it just showbiz or it's true? Is it showbiz? It's true. It's absolutely true. You know, um, but my job, I guess, is just to warn people and just tell you, look, this is what it is. It is what it is. It's the truth. Now, um, if you want to ignore my warnings, if you want to ignore not just my warnings, but the warnings of, of every pastor that is out there, any, any uh, spiritual leader of any you know, church will tell you that, you know, hey, the devil is real. You know, mm -hmm. God is real. Jesus is real. So people have to choose, you know, and I think a lot of people, they know it's true, but uh, admitting the truth requires that they take responsibility and people don't want to do that so it's easier to say oh no I don't believe you and go back to your lifestyle than to say I do believe you let me change my lifestyle mm -hmm. you see see people would rather fight God than fight sin mm -hmm. so if you want to fight God then you'll disagree with me but if you want to fight sin, then you'll be like, well, he has a point. And I think why he's asking that is because you're in the showbiz industry. So, of course, there's the question of how valid is your story. But uh -huh. let's just move on, nevertheless. You've come from now the Santeria. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned a little bit about your interaction with some of these artists. Some of them are also your friends, like you said, who mm -hmm. are in devil worship. They've sold their souls to the devil. And some of them are very, uh, you know, people that you know very well. Mm -hmm. So you come back to Kenya. What happens? Does that pass it by the devil of selling your soul to the devil stop there or does it continue? Well, it continued. Um, so, you know, uh, as you, the enemy, he really likes to send uh, ladies towards men and he likes to send men towards ladies or depending on what, you know, what suits your fancy. So, um, again, he sends a lady and he, and he tells her to tell me or he's, he's communicating through her. And... Um, he says, you know, basically, look, man, the things that are happening to you, it's not supposed to be happening like this. There's some people who are after you. There are people who are jealous of you, and they've put witchcraft on you. So now you have to go see this guy so that you can get the witchcraft taken off of you so that things can go well for you again. So obviously at the time, you know, spiritually naive, just like anybody else in the industry, just thinking, hey, man, having no idea that life is spiritual, having no idea that God is real, Satan is real. I was just in the industry just because I was good at it and talented and I loved making music. So, um, you know, I go to see this guy that she referred me to. His name was Dr. Jafari. Is this the same lady or someone else? No, 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 this is Oh, yeah, you've lady. mentioned it's someone else. But yes. is it, who is this lady? Um, she, like, I won't mention her name, but she's just, a, you know, a, a lady around Nairobi. And she... Um, you know, obviously she was like, you should be really far right now. You know, you're just really supposed to be a millionaire and whatever. So um, I listened to what she had to say. But who was she in your life? Say. So that you reached to the point where you're listening to her she and taking to, her advice. She, yeah, she, she was posing as a, a manager, you know. Yeah, she wanted to pose as my manager, you know. So, um, yeah, so she introduces me to this guy uh, called Dr. Jafari, you know. And um, I gave Dr. Jafari a call, and this guy starts explaining everything that I'm going through and tells me about my situation over the phone and then tells me that, you know, hey, we have to do some things to rectify this situation. So naturally, I'm curious now because have you ever called somebody and they start telling you about all your problems? <laughs> they start, you know, uh, revealing the secrets that you have uh, hidden. And so... Needless to say, I, uh, I went to go see Dr. Jafari. Now, he was in Mombasa, so I traveled to Mombasa to go see this guy. And he picks me up uh, in a nice, slick, black sedan and um, drives me to my hotel and then tells me to get ready. We're going to go to his office. So um, I put my things in the hotel. We go back downstairs and um, I get back into the car and we drive to his office. And his office is like a, it's like a, a hotel room, but in the corner of the office, there's all these things on the floor, fetishes. Um, when you say fetishes, what yeah, are those? I mean, things like, um, things, they're a bit difficult to describe, but 
they look like calabash you know you, you know a calabash uh, um, strange looking bottles you know African traditional stuff on the ground you know um, sitting on a mat okay and there's there's a there's bottles and there's cans and there's all kinds of things so he tells me to take off my shoes and sit down so I took off my shoes I had a seat and funny enough a lot of these guys who are really deep in witchcraft they pose like um, he posed like a Muslim he looked you know he with the with a Muslim hat and whatever and um, so Dr. Jafari begins to recite an incantation and as he's doing so he's saying you know strange things like you know bismillah blah, you know just things like that you would hear like sometimes you hear Muslims say some of these things but let's then, not even okay yeah I'm not saying what religion he was and mm -hmm. he was a witch <laughs> you know so uh, he recites these incantations and then to my surprise I mean I was just shocked a voice comes from the calabash and begins to speak to him in a very ancient Swahili but it begins to communicate with Dr. Jafari and Dr. Jafari says that hey you know uh, a young man has come to see you and he is uh, here because he needs assistance you know his enemies have come against him and blah 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 and he's explaining to the voice and the voice is responding and giving him instructions what was the voice saying well the voice began to give him instructions on what I should do in order to take the so-called curses off of me so and a lot of people get pulled into witchcraft like that um, someone will tell you that hey your life is going crazy because people have cursed you so now you need to go see this witch or you need to go see this person so they can, they can remove the curses off of you alright so if you fall for that because there's only Jesus can remove curses okay the blood of Jesus is the only one who re removes curses if you go to anybody else to have curses removed to have witchcraft removed to revenge to use witchcraft to fight witchcraft or any any of that foolishness you're putting yourself into witchcraft you're you you're you're literally giving yourself you're selling your soul All right. so I didn't know that at the time I thought I was seeking a remedy for the situation because somebody obviously if somebody has put something on you your enemies have put something on you you're going to try and get that thing removed and I was seeing the effects I mean I, I, everything was just disappearing one after the other so, um, so for someone who has just joined us I think it's very important to mention in this case you're going to Dr. Jafari as you call him mm -hmm. because you had been you told that your star mm -hmm. had, had been, been hijacked or something like that been, yeah. so you had to come back and then now you're in Mombasa and you're trying to mm -hmm. fix your star mm -hmm. yeah all right so then tell us exactly what happened now the voice is talking to Dr. Jafari so the voice is giving instructions to Dr. Jafari tell him to go purchase uh, a can and purchase some ingredients and so um, the can that he told me to purchase was a can of Zesta. At the time, I didn't understand what he was telling me to do, but I just did it. He told me to purchase a can of Zesta, you know, the, the jam, yeah. you know. So um, I, 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 we bought it, and then he told me to go back to the hotel and put it between your feet in the shower and, you know, um, put some of the herbs over your, over your head. And as you're washing, say every curse of witchcraft that people have put upon my life let them come off of me and go into the bottle without opening the bottle so the bottle was still sealed the the can of zesta the jam was still sealed so um i did so and uh and then he told me after you've showered and after you've done that put the can under your bed sleep and i'll come pick you up tomorrow so naturally i did it i i just out of curiosity i mean at this point I'm hearing voices coming from a calabash. This guy's told me everything that's wrong with me. I'm thinking, man, this is this. I'm being driven more by curiosity and fear than anything else. So I put the can. I showered. I did exactly as they told me to do. Back in your hotel room. Mm -hmm, in my hotel room. Took a shower. Said every curse that these people have put on me, let it get off of me and get into the can. And then I p took the can and I put it under the bed. Of course, I couldn't sleep for a few hours. I kept on waking up to look under the bed like, is the can still there, you know? Mm -hmm. So finally, I doze off 
And then, uh, you know, the next morning I wake up, the phone is ringing, it's Dr. Jafari, come downstairs, let's go. Bring the can, don't open it. So I take the can, put it in a bag, I didn't open it, got dressed, and go back to Dr. Jafari's office. He begins to recite the incantations again, the spirit speaks through the calabash, and begins to instruct him to tell me to give him the can. And then I pass the can to him, they examine it to see if I've opened it or not, I hadn't opened it. He passed it back to me and he, and he tells me, okay, open the can. So you know how Zesta is, right? You, you open the can and then there's and why, a steel the way, tin. Why Zesta? Why not anything else? Why do you think oh, no, told I, it? He didn't tell me to, say, to, to buy Zesta. He just told me to buy a tinned, okay. a, a tinned okay. can. Mm -hmm. It just needed to be sealed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, Zesta was just the only thing we found at the supermarket. Like, this is a steel tin. So, um, so I opened it myself. I opened the plastic um covering and then there's a tin on the inside that you peel back like that so i opened it myself it was sealed and then after i opened it i passed it back to dr jafari jafari spreads a newspaper on the ground and then he empties the contents of the of the can onto the newspaper and the stuff that came out of that can is stuff that is kind of difficult to to describe just, I mean, everything from, like, beads. I don't know, like, you know, like, the Catholic Church beads? Yeah, they, they, I saw that in there. It's like, man, how did that stuff get in there? There was, um, there was, there were something that looked like a ball. And then it's mixed with the strawberry jam. So it looks like, it looks reddish and it looks disgusting. You know what I mean? Um, that, that's how witchcraft is. Witchcraft is disgusting. It's repulsive. But Satan loves the disgusting things. He's dirty like that. He's filthy. He's cursed. Okay. So um, they they had all kinds of things in there. Something that looked like an onion that's been peeled. Things that are difficult to describe. Okay. Uh, I saw a white string, and I follow the string, and it turns out that this string is actually the tail of a dead chameleon with its mouth wide open. I was like, oh, that's just disgusting. So Jafari takes a pen and he lifts up every one of those things and he begins to explain to the voice what this is. So he says, you know, here we have, you know, some kind of a, uh, a chain, some kind of a Catholic, you know those Catholic uh, uh, chains that they, mm -hmm. that they used for, uh, for the beads or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I, um, so I begin to, you know, just listen to what his, the explanation is for every one of those things. He lifts it up with a pen and says, here we have a, a chain. Here we have like a, a ball of, you know, some kind of an, a rotten onion or something like that and all these different things. So um, the voice from inside the calabash was laughing. It was like <laughs> it was it was it was Why I don't know scared at I was time? I was scared but at the same time I'm like look if these guys can make all this stuff appear in a can imagine what they can do to your body you know what I mean so let me just cooperate and get through with it and do whatever they ask and get away you know so um and at the same time there's still a level of foolishness just a young guy is still trying to make it in the industry and stuff so um I just decided, okay, let me just do what these guys say and, and then get so out of the What did they tell you about the stuff that came out of the can? He said every one of those different ingredients represented a different curse that my enemies had put on me to prevent me from succeeding. Because naturally the music industry is very competitive. So one guy might not want the other guy to really do well. So in order to bring this other guy down, he'll go and, and sacrifice on an altar and he'll sacrifice something big just to prevent you from you know from really doing well and that's just the nature of the hatred within the industry you know people hate on people like it's not just in the industry man there's there's you know families that do that to one another there's even erica's aunt, my wife's uh, aunt you know put curses on her bewitched her to bring her down so that she could you know so that she could come up so now those those things being in that can did that mean that you had actually now be, been set free since they were saying those things had oh, come out of your body oh it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't over yet 
Now, all of those different ingredients represented a different kind of curse. One was financial, the other was so that I couldn't travel, the other one was to block any kind of open doors that were open for me before. You know, everything represented some form of misfortune. So now the key was, the, the voice explained to Dr. Jafari that now what I need to do to get rid of all of this stuff, I need to uh, pay to have a camel sacrificed. And when they sacrifice this camel, the to animal pull itself? The, uh, an animal, yes. So I'm, I was supposed to buy an animal, and they're going to go and sacrifice it. They're going to pour the blood into a basin, and that basin, they're going to pour that blood onto all of this stuff to cover it. Okay? In other words, that my enemies had sacrificed to pull me down, I have to sacrifice to get back up. You understand? This is the kingdom of darkness, though. This is how it really works in the, in the kingdom of darkness. Nobody moves up except through sacrifice. Even in Christianity, nobody moves up except by the blood of Jesus. He's, he was the final sacrifice. All right? But nothing moves unless there's bloodshed. All right? So, so did you buy the camel? I paid for it, yes. I paid for it. I was wondering, like, now where am I supposed to get a camel? I mean, it's not like they sell them on the street corner. Dr. Jafari was like, don't worry about that. I've got that covered. So I gave him the money. How much? It's funny, it was, it was 100,000. Yeah. So I gave him the money for a camel. And I told him, because he, he, he wanted me to, uh, to go with him to sacrifice it, and we were supposed to do it on the beach after nightfall. So to me, that just kind of sounded like one of those trips you don't come back from, you know. So I was like, yeah, here, you take the money, you sacrifice it, you do whatever you have to do. I'm going to be, you know, elsewhere. I'll be at the at the theater. I, actually, I think I was watching an Avengers movie or something. So um, he agreed. He said, "No problem. I'll do it for you." So while he was doing that, I was, you know, watching some movie. And then while I'm watching the movie, something started happening. You know, um, I started feeling as if something is like really trying to take over my mind. Like, you know how I don't know maybe. If you're, if you're feeling sleepy and you don't want to sleep, you just mm -hmm. kind of just shake your head like that. Well, I started really, you know, feeling like something's coming to, make, to, to, to put me to sleep, and I started fighting it. And the more I fought it, the stronger it became. And I knew I wasn't sleepy. It was maybe around 8.30 or 9 p.m. I was wide awake, you know. Um, and in those days, man, we wouldn't sleep till like 3 or 4 a.m., maybe 5 a.m. sometimes anyway, so... Man, this thing comes to take over my mind. I didn't understand what was happening, but I had a feeling it had something to do with whatever Jafari was doing on the beach. So I just tried to fight. I woke up. I, I, I mean, I stood up. Um, I stepped out of the theater because, you know, we were watching the movie in the theater. I step out in the middle of the movie. I said, forget the movie. I, I walked into the lobby. I'm shaking my head. I'm like, man, this is crazy. What, you know, something's really trying to make me faint, really wanted me to pass out. And I could tell, like, yo, if you pass out from this thing, you might not wake up. So I, um, I, called a, I called a friend of mine who happens to be a pastor and told him what I did. And then um, he started praying immediately over the phone. And whatever that thing was, it was about to make me pass out. I was about to faint. Whatever it was, it stopped. And then it left me alone. And then I went back into the movie theater. And obviously, I couldn't even focus on what was happening in the on, in the movie. Like, man, my life was a real movie, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, needless to say, I got out of town quick. I got out of Mombasa quick. Got back to Nairobi, and you know, I stopped messing with this guy. But I Has realized. Has Jafari ever looked for you since then? No, 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 no. He's never looked for me since then. He didn't even but I, call you, perhaps, to ask you if 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 his efforts to try and deliver you what? Nope. No, I think to a certain extent, these guys know that what they're doing is evil, you know. So if people escape, they don't, they don't really go after them that hard. But, you know, there's a lot of people who fall for that, you know, because witchcraft is very real. And if you seek a remedy other than Jesus Christ to, re to rectify the situation, you're going to put yourself in witchcraft. And then witchcraft does not go away. It just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And, you know, you can start out sacrificing a chicken, but as you get deeper in, you'll be sacrificing big things 
you know, because you want big things, you want bigger and bigger things. So um, that's how I that's how I escaped. But mm -hmm. Dr. Jafari told me that he, I'm not the only musician who he's helped before. I he want said, to ask you. Yeah. When you say you begin to sacrifice big things, big things like what exactly? Well, you, you'll start out depending on what you want. You know, Satan does not give you anything for free. You have to sacrifice something. That's the language he understands. He understands the language of sacrifice. When you because say that's sacrifice, what, do you mean killing something or someone? Yeah, something's got to die. Without the flow of blood, there is no sacrifice. All right. <laughs> I want us to take a short break and when we return, yeah. I want us to talk a little bit more about now the fact that you did not give your soul to the devil mm -hmm. and now you, you have actually moved away from anything that will lure you in that direction. Mm -hmm. And I want us to take a short break. And um, remember, uh, we, you can engage us through our social media platforms. That is uh, tv 47 ke on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I have a lot of comments from many of you who are watching. And when we return after this break, we will be sampling some of them. And of course, I'll allow Bamboo to uh, you know, respond to some of these comments. I know one is about your sister, but we'll allow you to answer that question afterwards. So let's take a short break. Don't go too far. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Saturday Confessions right here on TV 47. Uh, before we took a short break, uh, Bamboo definitely just gave us a narration of his story towards the end. The fact that he, in the end, did not give or sell his soul to the devil. Now, before we even go too far, I want us to sample some of the comments coming from many of you online. And we have Mama Afrik, uh, called Mama Afrik Bange. She is saying, this is crazy. The devil is here to destroy, but most importantly, so is the king of kings above all. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have here, Kevin Fraji is saying, Victoria Kimani is, is, is bamboo sister in this case. Just ask if she knew and shared the whole deal with her. Mm -hmm. I think he meant with him. Uh -huh. uh, bamboo, I'll leave that to you. Maybe you can answer that question. Because of course your sister is also a musician. The question yes. of course would be, if you know these truths about the industry, mm -hmm. why allow your sister to proceed? Well, I mean, salvation is personal, you know, and she's an adult, so she has to see it for herself. I think uh, a lot of the things that I've been speaking about, she hasn't seen it, so she hasn't gotten to the level where I got to, and they haven't approached her like that. But I believe eventually they will, and when they do, she'll be in a position to say no. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then we have uh, Mary Faber. You see, the interview was so quiet. I think the whole idea here is I'm trying to give Bambu an opportunity to share his story because it's so intense. Sometimes you don't want to break in between. Uh, Samuel Mbugo is saying, I think these, uh, this is real in most of the prominent people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, Somedo uh, Shagzoja is saying, So, Wizkid, Wizard, uh, you've been my longtime uh, favorite rapper back in. Um, two K's. I don't know what that means. I'm on not so much of dot com, but hey. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, Wizkid has that mm -hmm. song uh, where he says in his lyrics, he says, "Beautiful like mommy water, eh? Girl, God bless your father." So why is he saying beautiful like mommy water? You know who's mommy water? Mm -hmm. Mommy water is a mermaid spirit. A mermaid is half human, half fish. Where do you see these? You have to conjure them at the riverside, at the side, or at the beach. So you conjure that spirit, and then you begin to have a covenant with that spirit. If you see them, they're very attractive. So that's why Wizkid is telling you that this girl is beautiful like Mami Wata. Oh, wow. <laughs> so Rosen Dirangu here says, uh, this stories, this stories are, uh, let me just take it back a bit. She's saying, these stories are scary. Uh, oh, of course, another comment there. Uh, Simon is saying, devil's tale where greed path leads. Um, we also have Melody Canyon 
is saying this dude never got past this <laughs> <laughs> and of course many other comments of people saying that they are following they're locked in mm. and they are watching of course we Erica Mukisa has joined us yes good to see you good to see you too you guys you're now married yes mm. and you definitely are doing things together to help people yeah uh, so when we look at now Erica's story bamboo's story mm. and the fact that you are actually one of the guys luring people into the kingdom of the devil yes. and then bamboo here was a victim <laughs> of yeah. people who were trying to lure him into yeah. the kingdom of the devil mm. so i think the question many would ask and, and I'm, I'm just guessing probably there's someone who's watching right now and they're wondering so how do i get out uh, mm. of course when we spoke to you erica last week you told us that mm. even when you were trying to get out of sorcery the devil was taunting you and telling you, you know what if you leave i'm going to kill you, you. no one survives you yes. know so I'll just start by asking you, Erica, mm -hmm. is there a chance for someone to come out of the occult or devil worshipping or mm -hmm. basically having soul to you, your soul to the devil? Can you get it back? Yes, you can. You can. Uh, what, we do, like, what I decided to do from the time I got delivered, I started praying for people. I started telling them what is happening and uh, also provided an opportunity for them to escape. So uh, we have uh, every Friday we have ministry we deliver we pray for people to get delivered at a father's house family church in nairobi riru town so we basically avail ourselves to help as many people as possible sometimes we are invited to different places uh we've i like from the time i got delivered i've i've gone to almost all churches in uganda uh praying for people testifying and doing whatever I can to see that I, I bring souls back into the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, so I, I believe there are so many ministries that are also trying to avail these services, although mm. many pastors don't know about uh, this deliverance uh, bit of it. So you find that some, some of these people are being taken advantage of some people will ask them for money before they pray for them mm -hmm. yeah so if you go to a minister who is asking you for money for your deliverance you need to run out of that place because jesus died for everyone and he did not charge anyone for money so, i think even before we go to find going to deliverance and mm. even understanding what deliverance is in this case mm. both of you are married yes. of course there's mm. someone who's asking how did you two meet to the point that now you're married yeah. Yeah. And you are also doing ministry together and helping people who are victims mm -hmm. of either being devil worshippers or being one of the ones being hunted down. Bamboo. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we met through a, a mutual friend by the name of Tommy. Um, Tommy's father was uh, an archbishop in, uh, in Kisumu. Oh, okay. Yeah, his name was uh, Silas Owiti. And um, now his wife is the archbishop of Vosh Church in Kisumu. Uh, Vosh stands for a uh, voice of salvation and healing and so um, Tommy you know reached out to me through Facebook and um, we just started you know going back and forth and talking about things concerning like what we're discussing now and then um, you know he sent me a portion of uh, Erica's testimony in which she was just ministering somewhere in Kisumu and then um, I asked for Erica's uh, contacts and we just started you know talking because you know I'd been through something similar and then um, we just started building from there and um, I think it, probably three or four years later is when we got married yeah Erica yeah. how does it feel now I mean both of you are together you've gone through the same experience how does it work for you yeah it's very okay because we understand people when they come to us uh, having come from that kind of experience mm -hmm. he understands my kind of ministry I also understand his ministry and together we are a team we we help other people mm -hmm. are you it, have you come into contact with people who maybe have the same testimonies of either being devil worshippers or being you know lured into devil worshipping Absolutely. thousands of people mm. thousands in uganda if if i was to make them line up mm -hmm. there are thousands of them uh in kenya even this uh is it yesterday Yesterday, every Friday we have deliverance. Yesterday we had some of them getting delivered from the Marine Kingdom. So uh, we, we have very many cases, like uh, a, a man came with his wife. The wife was eating mattresses. 
and yeah and we we prayed for the wife she got delivered another one came with the son the son was eating clothes eating and swallowing you know it's difficult to explain these things to people and they understand but the baby ate toilet paper in the church when you say delivered the bamboo what do you mean by deliverance the spirits that are yeah. tormenting them leave them yeah. and they are free yeah so life is spiritual yeah we've had cases yeah, of, uh, there is another boy who we prayed for and he got free. He was eating bricks. Mm -hmm. Every day he would eat a brick. He was not eating food. So we prayed for him and he got delivered. He's now free. He's testifying also. So mm -hmm. many cases. Yeah. So, so thank God. W when we look at now the people you're helping, what exactly happens? How mm -hmm. can someone access that deliverance? Sure, they can reach out to us. Um, they can feel free to give us a call, uh, mm -hmm. call our office um, at plus 254-717-062098. That's plus 254-717-062098. Or you may dial plus 254-799-733-775. That's plus 254-799. Seven three three seven seven five. Right. Or follow us on uh, Erica Belinda Ministries on mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also we have books that they can read. They are mm -hmm. available on Amazon Kindle. Mm -hmm. We have Erica. and and just to look to look a bit about you. If, if my director can just maybe have those books on the screen, just tell us a bit about your books brief, yeah. briefly. Yes, In Erica Part One: Seven Years in Hell. I write about witchcraft and family. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I explain about what happened to me, how I was initiated by relatives. I was initiated when I was young. So uh, in, in this particular book, I explain about, I write about family trees, how people are affected by the bloodline. You find that a certain family okay. is being tormented. You find that a certain family is being tormented with uh, immorality. A certain family, they are barren in another family, things like that. But I also teach them how to get out of it. And I talk about secular music. In Erica Part 2, I talk about the New World Order. I explain about some of the things I was talking about in the previous interview. Okay. And Erica Part 3, Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare. Mm -hmm. I talk about, uh, yeah, witchcraft and how someone can pray against witchcraft, mm -hmm. the marine kingdom, mm -hmm. you know, people are being tormented by spirits in the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I... So quite a number that. of books there. There are, I think, four in total. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, yeah. so you guys have written books, and I'm sure many people will be reaching out to you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so commendable, you know, to see exactly what you guys are doing. <laughs> the yeah. testimonies you have shared, they're just <sighs> chilling, especially mm -hmm. Erica's story. Bamboo, you mm. bought a whole camel for 100,000. I bought a camel for 100,000. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 100K just went like that. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it, obviously it didn't solve the problem. So, yeah. you know, witchcraft will, you know, delving into witchcraft will yeah. not solve your problem. Right. It'll just put you deeper in. All right. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for sharing your testimonies. Mm -hmm. Bamboo welcome. the rapper. Man, oh, you guys you. are doing a good job. Thank you. Erica, Issa, thank you so much for coming. You're of welcome. course, uh, this has been Saturday Confessions. Uh, we have been uh, having... You know this story going on for the last uh, last week Saturday and today and this has been Saturday confessions where we've been talking about the kingdom of darkness people who have gone into the music industry who are in devil worshiping Erica Mukiso of course who also shared a story in sorcery you know her former uh, you know uh, engagement with the devil directly we hope that you have learned something we hope that you have been encouraged and inspired to do something different about your life and in case again you want to reach out to Erica Mukisa and Bamboo you can, of course, engage with us on social media or call the number on your screen and let us know who you are and how we can actually connect you to Erica. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Leangari. And, uh, of course, our sign language interpreter tonight has been Anwai Rimo. Again, if you want to engage us uh, to reach out to Bamboo and Erica, you can just write to us through our social media platforms. That's TV47KE uh, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And, of course, through our S SMS line and a phone number. Thank you for watching. Until next week, Saturday, for another yet exciting story. Do have a good night and God bless.